Tevin Campbell was born in November 1976 in Texas. His singing career began performing for his local church in the gospel choir. He was content with that standing, but his mother believed he could do something more and possibly pursue a career at it. Eventually, she arranged for him to audition for a jazz musician named Bobby Humphreys. Together, they did a video showcase of him performing and provided a copy of the tape to Benny Medea, who happened to be the vice president of Warner Brothers Records at the time. Also, Saida Garrett, who was also a recording artist, knew Quincy Jones and informed him about Tevin Campbell. Tevin was signed immediately on the spot. The timing for Campbell couldn't be more perfect. Quincy Jones happened to be working on a compilation album at the time, featuring artists such as Ella Fitzgerald, Miles Davis, James Ingram, and El DeBarge. The name of the album was called Back to the Block, and he decided to feature Tevin in a song called Tomorrow, and it was an instant smash. The song and the video catapulted Tevin into superstardom and made him an instant star. While all that was going on, Prince happened to be working on the soundtrack for a movie that he was working on called Graffiti Bridge. He invited Tevin to perform a song called Round and Round and also invited him to play a part in the movie. Shortly after that, around 1991, Tevin's first album was released. Called T-E-V-I-N, Campbell worked with producers such as Kyle West and I'll Be Sure. The album featuring the song, Tell Me What You Want Me To Do, went certified platinum. This was actually pretty good for a new recording artist. For his next album, Quincy Jones arranged for Tevin to work with producers such as Babyface, Prince, and Johnny Gill. The album, which featured songs like Can We Talk and Are You Ready, went double platinum. On a side note, what's interesting about Tevin's second album is Usher, a well-known recording artist, said the songs were actually meant for him. In a 2017 interview, he stated, when I was first signed with LaFace Records, I wanted to do an album with Babyface and L.A. Reid, right? I signed specifically for that reason. So L.A. Reid wanted Babyface to work on me, and they were going through, you know, a lot of drama at the time. They were kind of severing their ties. He got mad, and he built an entire album for me, and he gave the whole album to somebody else, Tevin Campbell. Can We Talk was supposed to be my song. At around 14, Tevin says he was invited to parties, and that's when he began to indulge. In 1996, Tevin released his third album, Back to the World. This time, there were some significant changes. He began to abandon his innocent bubblegum look, and he looked more grungy. He also decided to work with Puff Daddy, who gave him a more urban sound and less crossover pop. The album did not produce any hits and was considered a disappointment compared to his first two albums. In 1999, Campbell released his self-titled fourth album, where he worked with Wyclef Jones and Casey and Jojo from Jodeci. Unfortunately, this album did far worse than the last. It hardly got any press and was seldom talked about. It looked like his career was going downward, but this was nothing compared to the problems that he was about to have. In July 1999, residents in the area of Van Ness, California were complaining of strange activity and solicitation going on in the area. The local police decided to organize a sting operation to deal with the problem. Oblivious to this, Tevin rolled up to an undercover police officer and attempted to solicit oral sex from him. He was immediately arrested. Upon searching his car, they found drugs as well. To make matters worse, all of this was done right in front of an elementary school. In court, he was sentenced to a fine of $1,000 in order to complete a drug rehab and AIDS education program within a six-month period. 
This punishment was nothing compared to the damage done to his image when this issue became public. It was promoted on every media outlet from the small urban magazines to MTV. After this, Tevin immediately went into seclusion and it seemed to disappear from public spotlight, or so we thought. After the incident, Tevin managed to get in trouble with the law for a second time, but the details were not released to the press because he managed to keep it out of the media. After the dust settled, we thought Tevin went into seclusion, but he actually did what all other artists do when their career starts to fade. He performed overseas. He toured exclusively outside American soil in areas like China and Africa. He said he was surprised by how welcome he was there. In 2005, he finally decided to come back to the U.S. and join the musical Hairspray. Over the next several years, he worked on some songs that was supposed to be released online, but after a short amount of time, he decided to have it removed. After leaving Hairspray, he decided to start performing some of his old hits at small venues and festivals. He also did several interviews explaining his side of the story and how cruel people were towards him after it happened. After around 2015, Tevin has been more vocal about what happened to him and also the desire to work on more music. In a recent interview, he stated, I had a point to prove because I know a lot of people don't think that I can sing anymore since it's been years, but now I'm ready to come back. I do ultimately want to go back to Broadway and I do love theater. I want to act, but singing is my love. I feel like I'm sitting on a pot of gold. Since then, people have become more receptive to his presence since he became more honest about his sexuality. Recently, he's also created a little buzz on YouTube when a video of him performing Can We Talk With Babyface surfaced. As of this taping, Tevin has been scheduled to appear on Queen Sugar, a popular TV show on the OWN Network. As far as releasing a new album, Campbell does have dedicated fans who would probably support him, and only time will tell if that will happen.